Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 25th of May, 2011. 2,251 years ago this day, Halley's Comet passed closest to the sun on its first recorded passage through the solar system. Coincidentally, yesterday part of Halley's Comet crashed into the Earth. A chunk of ice a few meters across plummeted into the Earth's atmosphere at a speed of over 80,000 miles per hour and was vaporized many tens of kilometers above the surface of the Earth. It produced a fireball which can be seen in this movie. If you look at the top part of the image, you'll see a bright object crossing the sky. It's strange to think that that was once part of Halley's Comet. As you might have guessed by the fact that I'm spending so much time on Halley's Comet, that there isn't very much going on on the Sun. Well, that's not quite true, as we'll see later. But let's first take a look at the sunspot regions. At the moment, we only have one numbered sunspot on the disk. That's region 1216, that single large spot. However, there is a new region just beginning to appear in the Northern Hemisphere, just to the west of Sun Center. The level of activity we get over the next few days will probably depend on how rapidly that region grows. Let's see its development by using the SDO HMI data. Look carefully near Sun Center in the Northern Hemisphere and you'll see the first harbingers of the spots appearing. However, as I said, only a small proportion of such regions grow to be major sunspot groups. So we'll just have to wait and see for this one. The Gose X-ray plot tells a different story. Although the background has dropped to below B level again, there are a series of small flares that seem to go on for two or three hours. These are reminiscent of the much larger, long duration events that we saw a few days ago associated with coronal mass ejections. So I would expect to see in the transition region and coronal data evidence for such eruptions. So let's take a look at the SDO AIA data and see if we can pinpoint where these eruptions are coming from. In the coronal movie, we can see that there are lots of uh, regions that are producing small brightenings but it is clear that no one region is producing all of these events. In the Transition Region movie, just like yesterday, you can see all sorts of eruptions going on all over the place, but let's take a look at a couple of them in more detail. First the one off the northwest limb. Initially you will see a prominence growing becoming very dynamic. Then all of a sudden, a large amount of material are flung out into space. Isn't that just spectacular? But note, it does not take very long for the prominence to reform afterwards so it's ready to go again. Now let's compare that with the prominence on the east limb. Note how it too is growing and becoming more dynamic. Is this an indication that it's going to erupt just like the other one? So come back tomorrow and see if our hypothesis that a growing dynamic filament is likely to erupt is correct. But even if it isn't, you must admit that this is a pretty neat video. Especially when you consider the little circle in the bottom right hand corner is about the size of the Earth. Now let's take a look at the Soho Coronagraph data and see whether there was a CME produced by any of these events. And indeed there is. In the C2 there's a very spectacular coronal mass ejection off the northeast limb. In fact I'm surprised how large it is compared with the size of the filament eruption. You can also see the same coronal mass ejection just beginning to peak above the uh, occulting disk of the C3 instrument. With the low levels of solar activity we would expect that geospace is relatively quiet and indeed that's what we find. The solar wind speed, density and temperature have all fallen. The auroral zone is very quiet and the KP index is varying between 1 and 2. So in summary then, the sunspot number has dropped as predicted to 23, the X-ray background is below the B1 level, radio sun is very quiet at 82 solar flux units, the solar wind speed is around about 350 kilometers per second with a very low density of about 0.1 protons per cubic centimeter, and the KP index is still rated as quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is exactly the same as the last few days a minimal chance of getting any major flares. The sunspot number will remain low. We will still likely get coronal mass ejections, but the chance of getting a geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours is very low indeed. Looking at the composite coronal image from the stereo and SDO missions, some of the brighter regions in the north behind the east limb are beginning to approach, and we should start seeing some evidence of them in the next day or two. So unless new regions start to grow rapidly, we're not going to get very much activity for the next couple of days. If you want more up-to-date information about what's going on in the sun, follow some of the links in the description box below. Go to my channel if you want to see earlier editions of the sun today, or any of my videos on global warming. The background picture here, by the way, is what happens when a much larger chunk of a comet enters the Earth's atmosphere. Pretty devastating, huh? Anyway, that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.